Hey guys, Joe here. And in this episode, I show you how to overclock a non-overclockable CPU to well over 4 gigahertz. Also, I may or may not be wearing pants. Morning guys, Joe here, and today I'm going to be doing a video with that computer, which you will see a video on. I know this is all out of chronological order, but I wanted to do an easier video today. And today's video is going to be overclocking non-overclockable CPUs. For those of you that don't know, I did put out a video where I overclocked that exact processor, a 3470 to almost 4.2 gigahertz and gained quite a bit of performance in the, in the act of doing so. And I've actually had quite a few people ask me specifics on how to overclock it because you can't just use multiplier because it's a locked multiplier. You have to use base clock overclocking. You have to play with numbers. It gets complicated. So today we are going to get a little more in depth. I'm going to show you the basics on how we're going to do it on my motherboard, which is a Z75 from Biostar, which is basically a Z77. It just doesn't support three-way SLI and it has a little bit slower memory controller, but not by much, not enough to affect it. Plus I got that for at the time what was a good price. So we're gonna go ahead and fire it up and we will get to it. First thing you need to do is get into your BIOS. Second thing you need to do is get it to go into your BIOS correctly. So now I'm going to restart. Gaming keyboards are nice, but these ones that have memories and RGBs and all that crap on them tend to suck for getting into your BIOS and some other boards. So we're going to use a cheap ass one. So there's a tip for you. If it ain't working, try something else. So I'm going to turn you now and we're going to look at the screen. Here we are in the BIOS. Again, this is my BIOSTAR Z75. B motherboard and my BIOS is fully updated. That's another thing. Make sure your BIOS is completely updated. So as is the case with this processor, this is a Core i5-3470. It's a non-overclockable SKU. It runs at 3.2 gigahertz and it boosts to 3.4 gigahertz. So what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and overclock and see what we can do with it. Once again, this only works if you have a motherboard that is capable of overclocking a processor, period. There are motherboards out there such as the OEM HP Dells that do nothing and obviously that means you're not doing squats. So, let's go down and make sure everything's working. Okay, we're good there. Uh, chipset. It's been so long since I did this. I don't know what I'm doing. Now every motherboard is going to have its own overclocking menu. On the BIOSTAR it's under 1 O N E. So what we're going to do is enable a fixed ratio. We're going to type in 40 and see what happens. I have a feeling it's not going to work. Why you focus? Focus. Alright let me zoom in. If you see right here we went from 3.2 to 3.8 gigahertz, even though I keyed in a 4 gigahertz overclock. So, on this motherboard, it was able to take the multiplier from 32 to 38. Base speed 3.21 gigahertz, it's now 3.79 gigahertz. Let me close out some of these programs that are opening up in the background. Open up Real Temp. Free software, I highly suggest you get it. Real Temp is really good at showing you everything you need to know about your system. Because it doesn't identify it with the upgraded speed, it does show me my original score, which is 470 points, which quite frankly is plenty fast enough to run most things on an i5 these days. Um, an average, I think, for the base i3s on the Coffee Lake run at about 550, 560. So 470 is no slouch just for what it is. If you watched my HTPC video, uh, that took way longer than this is. And according to real temp, we are locked in at 3.811 gigahertz. So we're finished here. The score is 526 on the Cinebench. So going from just 3.2 to 3.8 gigahertz using just the multiplier 
on this motherboard, again, your motherboard may not allow it, but on this motherboard, enabled it to get a 57 point increase, which is dang near a 15% increase just for monkeying with the multiplier. So that means the next step is to go in and change the base clock as well as the RAM speed and see what we can get it up to. So real temp showed that we got to 53 degrees Celsius on the hottest core. That is perfect. That means I have a ton of room so I can increase voltage to that CPU and that means I'll get a higher clock frequency. Another point is don't think overclocking is just one button done get over it, you're, you're fine. It does take a little bit of monkeying around with stuff and I am by no means an expert in it. I just know the basics of what I need to do, except for, you know, getting into the BIOS because I'm stupid. But with patience, you can find a stable overclock that will work fine. Okay, back into the BIOS and let's go back to our one, which is our setting for the multiplier and the base clock. Since we know it won't go past 38, let's just set it to 38. We're gonna leave RAM at 1600 megahertz right now, just because when I start monkeying with the base clock, it's going to affect that speed anyways. Under CPU vCore, I'm going to increase it. Although to be honest, I wasn't paying attention to what it was running at. So let's go there we go. One tip is that most motherboards, not all of them, but most motherboards will actually have color coding for safe, dangerous. What are you doing? So obviously I would stay out of the red. For this processor, I'm probably going to add 0.24 volts. That should be plenty for what we're going to try to do. Again, we're just starting with the base clock overclocking. So let's take it from 100.26. Let's take it to 102. An additional program that I tend to use is CPU ID or CPU Z, CPU Z, however you pronounce it, because it uh, it definitely gives you a very accurate idea on what you're working with. So we're up to 3.876 megahertz, gigahertz. I know that that works, so we're going to increase it. 102 works fine. We're going to now go to, let's say 104 and see what happens. One reason why CPU Z or CPU ID is so important is because it also allows you to monitor your memory speed. Right now we are at 832 megahertz, which you double it because dual data rate, so DDR, it will come out to 1664. Now I have 1866 megahertz RAM in here, so I can go all the way up to there if I need to. And I can also change the clocks because 11, 11, 11, 28 is a little high, but I'm not gonna do that yet. But as you can see at 104, here, let me zoom you in. So as you can see here at 104.02 bus speed, we are now at 3.952 gigahertz. So let's go ahead and run another Cinebench. And to run right now, we're only at 1.212 volts on the V-Core, which is very good. It actually had V-Droop. It's running at 1.164 volts right now, so that's really good. Voltage is the killer. Voltage is what's going to stop you from being able to overclock your system. And in fact, the temperatures are staying right in line with where they were at 3.8 gigahertz. Run at 3.952 gigahertz is completed and we scored 544 Cinebench as well as maxed out at, again, 53 degrees Celsius on the hottest core, which means we still have room to go. Everything's still functioning correctly and let's go ahead and pump it up. Again, I know I can get to about 4.2 gigahertz on this processor, but we're going to do it slowly. So next thing to do is restart again. This time remembering to actually get into the BIOS. Now if the RAM you're using isn't capable of running 1866 or even 1600 megahertz and it's not a you know decent RAM, you're just using like basic high inks or something, go ahead and make sure that you keep your memory speed down when you increase your base clock. 
because when you increase your base clock, it speeds up all the components in the system. It can actually throw your PCI lanes out of whack. It can throw your memory out of whack. It can cause a lot of issues. So if you don't have RAM that can overclock, that's going to be a limiting factor as well. So third step now, we're going to increase the multiplier, not the multiplier, the base clock from 104 to let's say 107 and we'll see what happens. Voltages were good, perfect, so I'm not going to mess with that because, again, with VDroop, it was staying underneath what we set our maximum to. So let's go to 107.00. So now we're at 107 base clock, and we will go ahead and restart it. That may fail because I just heard the power supply click. No, yeah, we got the BIOS splash screen at least. Man, credit where credit is due. This knock to a cooler on this thing is... Phenomenal. It's keeping it nice and cool. It's actually one of the best coolers I've ever used and I'm a big fan of the Hyper 212s But this Noctua is actually dissipating a lot of heat as well Probably more than anything up to a water-cooled full water-cooled setup because I've had an AIO on there It didn't keep it this cool. So here we are back into CPU Z. We are at 106.99 on the bus speed we are at 38 for the multiplier, and we are now working at a core speed of 4.065 gigahertz. Still at 1.212 volts under idle conditions. Temperatures have come up a little bit. It's idling in the high 20s, very low 30s, except for one core, which is bouncing a little bit. But it has programs running in the background, so let's kill a couple of those. There we go. That should drop it down. And here is exactly what I was talking about. I have memory that's rated for speed, but if you don't, this can cause a problem. By going to 1.7, I've taken it from 1600 megahertz to 1712 megahertz. I still have some room left on my RAM, but if you don't, that is something to keep in mind. If it crashes, you'll have to go in and the first thing I would adjust would be your RAM speed. Slow that back down. But Again, I have overclockable RAM, it's rated for it, so next thing to do is see if it's stable in Cinebench. Don't forget the last score was 544, that was at 3.952 gigahertz. We are now at 4.066 gigahertz. Okay, Cinebench run is done at 4.04 gigahertz. We are at 559 CB score. At 559 Cinebench score, we still have some room to go. I know that this will top 570, and that's my goal. Uh, in terms of max temperature, 57 degrees Celsius. So taking it from 3.2 to 4.06 gigahertz has only increased our max temperature by 4 degrees Celsius. We've got more monkeying to do. Something I wasn't going to film, but I've decided that I should film it, put it in here so that we're honest. I'm having a couple of issues because I screwed up with voltages. When you screw up with voltages, sometimes you have to do the hard thing, which is reset your CMOS by taking out the battery, unless you have a clear CMOS button like my X99 board does. But it doesn't always work. Like right now, I'm stuck at the splash screen because, well, again, I screwed up some settings and the CMOS needs to clear, so... I need to take it out and power the system on with no battery in it and then it will say failure and then I can put the new CMOS battery back in it. So we'll be back once I get this crap sorted out. Much fiddling later and we are at now, let's zoom in a little bit, there you go, can you read that? If not, I'll read it out to you, but 4.102 gigahertz. Don't know why I said it like that, I do apologize. I did go through and tighten up my timings a little bit, down to 10, 10, 10, 27 from 11, 11, 11, 28. I'll probably tighten those up a little bit more as we go along. And we are still pulling the same voltage, so I haven't had to change any of that. Let's go ahead and run another Cinebench and see what it scores. 565 CB score, we're getting there, we're closing in, we're getting closer to some good i7 scores. Again, four core, four thread. If it was eight threaded, it would be exceeding the 3770, probably closing in somewhere between a 3770 and a 4690K. I had a 4690K that was overclocked and it was running 720. So, <sighs> We're going to go in, we're going to monkey just a little bit, because I'm at just under 108 on the base clock. 
I'm at 107.96 right now. And that means just a little itty bitty more. Little itty bitty more. Okay, after much fiddling, finagling, and cursing with F words, I watched my original video about the overclocking of this processor and I realized I only got it to 4.1 then too because I'm stuck at 4.1 which is still a 900 megahertz overclock on a 3.2 gigahertz processor that is not overclockable and I'm very happy with the results and there we go 572 points which is right in line with where it was before so What's the point of overclocking a processor like this? The point is, let's say that you have an i5-4690K, which is a $130, $150, $180 processor, depending on where you buy it from. Let's say $130 will go on the low end. You can find these processors on AliExpress and eBay for $20 to $40. So that's $90 cheaper. So if you have a CPU that fails because your cooling fan died, you put too much voltage through it, whatever the case may be, and you can't afford to go out and spend 130 bucks, spend 20 to $40, and you'll have a processor that can keep up with pretty much anything you need to do outside of like major workstation stuff, and it won't be as bad a bottleneck on your graphics cards as say like an i3 would. Because this is still a four core, four threaded processor, but it's a four core, four threaded processor that put out a 572 score. 660 is what a 3770 does, or 600 and, yeah, 662, but you gotta remember that has twice as many threads, has eight of them versus four, and Cinebench likes threads. And if this was an i7 with those specs, it would actually be running faster than the 3770. So, yeah. Keep in mind that you can do this with other processors too. Not all of them will have the same range of overclocking ability. Some may do better, some may do worse, but I'm also going to keep my eyes open because if I get a cheap 3770, not a K, a cheap 3770, we'll see what we can do with that and see if we can make that beat like a 4790K, which would be pretty cool and I think very feasible. But let's recap where we were. We were at 470 CV score, bone stock. We're now at 572. That's an increase of over 100 points. That's over 22% by changing just a few things. Is there more left in this? Not this particular processor, but you never know. You may be a silicon lottery winner and get one that overclocks to 4.2, 4.3. You don't know. You won't know until you try, and that's the point. So hopefully this answers your questions. If you have any other questions, leave them down below. Any comments, leave those down below. Um, don't forget to subscribe. I really want to see as many people get on here as possible because I don't just do computers. I also do video game hunting. I do some car stuff. I do random videos, just things that catch my mind and my fancy because I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just a guy that makes videos because he wants to. So if there's something that I can do to teach you something, I'd be more than happy to. So drop a comment down below. And as always, I'll talk to you later.